The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Hi, I'm Sal. Today we're going to solve problem number six of exam one of fall 2009. Now, before you attempt the problem, there are a lot of things that you, you should know that there is background material that's going to help you solve the problem, especially during an exam, given that this was the hardest on this exam. So you should be able to finish this I don't know, within 15 minutes or so. So uh, before you start the problem, you should know what the energy is of a charged particle in an electric field, which is given by this equation, the conversion from uh, an electron volt to a joule, which is just a uh, conversion of energy, and this should be given to you on your uh, table of constants. Also, the energy associated with an emission spectrum, which is given by uh, this equation, where K is actually the ionization energy of hydrogen, which is 13.6 electron volts, and the Z squared is, at, is the atomic number of your uh, atom of interest. And then the NF and the N sub I are your transition states. The de Broglie wavelength which is given by lambda is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum. And always remember that you need to conserve energy. This is the, what's going to get you the, the, the full points on the problem. So this problem um, is best solved if you draw a little image from as you, as you, as you read the, the problem. So the problem reads, atoms of ionized helium gas, He+, are struck by electrons in a gas discharge tube operating with the potential difference between the electrodes set at 8.8 electro uh, 8 .8 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing an image. So let's say I have two plates where the voltage between these two is set at 8.88 volts. And what's happening here is that you're accelerating electrons to here. So you can imagine that, say, this is positively charged and this is negatively charged. That you, and then an electron starts from your negative plate, and then it accelerates through your, t t towards your positive plate. And you can imagine your plate having like a hole or something small where your electron can then exit and then be in free space under the influence of no no potential. So your, and then these electrons are actually, are being aimed towards your helium plus uh, ions. So that's your target. Now, the, as, as, if I continue reading the problem, it says that the emission spectrum includes the line associated with the transition from n equals 3 to n equals 2. Calculate the minimum value of the de Broglie wavelength of scattered electrons that have collided with helium plus and generated this line in the emission spectrum. So it's an energy conservation problem. And all this tells you is that so you have an electron that is being accelerated through your potential. The electron is going to strike a helium plus atom. And upon that, you detect an emission spectrum. Well, what does that tell you? That tells you that that electron actually went, excited an electron in the atom. The electron had to transition to a higher state to absorb energy and then decay. And in the process of decaying, it emits a photon, which is what you detect. So this information is given to you. But the problem asks to find the value of the de Broglie wavelength. So since it's an energy conservation problem, and this is the very first step that happens, and I know that my energy equation for a charged particle is simply Q times the voltage. And so I know that Q, which is yeah, it has a certain value of charge. The product of these two, when I multiply it by 8.8 electron volt, by 8.8 volts, this to yield or yields 8.88 electron volts. So it's a new unit of energy for which you saw the conversion. And the reason why this takes this shape is because one electron has the charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and that's where the conversion from electron volt to joules comes from. So I'm going to go ahead and call this E sub I initial because this is our initial energy that we're given. So we just start with this energy, nothing else. Nothing else is given from the problem. So we want to go ahead and conserve this. So 
our final state, the combination of whatever we are solving should not have a higher energy than what initially what we started with. So because the problem says that we're, we have um, uh, an emission spectrum, I'm going to go ahead and draw another image. Kind of like, I'll label this one initial, and I'll label this one final. So my final image, I can imagine a helium plus atom, and you know, the electron strikes the helium plus atom, and we measure a, or we detect a photon, and you're, you get a scattered electron. So that's what the problem says, the scattered electron. So what, the, what this tells me is that this energy now is going into creating a photon and scattering an electron from your atom. So if I was to equate those two or whatnot, I can already say that, well, in my final state, I detect an emission uh, or an emission spectrum, and I know what the what the transition is. It goes from n equals 3 to n equals 2. That's what the problem tells us. So if I take my equation, my delta E of my emission spectrum, this is simply going to be negative K, which is, I can say is 13.6 electron volts. And I'm going to multiply it by the atomic number squared. Now, this is where people also make mistakes during the exam. The atomic number is not one, it's actually two because we're talking about helium. And the atomic number is not the number of electrons or the number of, or what, what is um, uh, value is in terms of, of an ion, but it's actually hum the number of protons that you have. So helium has two protons. So I can multiply this by two and I'm gonna square it. And I know that I'm going from n equals three to n equals two. So if I plug this into my equation, I have 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over 2 squared, which is 9 and 4. And if you plug this in, and assuming that your calculator works and it's correct, you get a value of 7.56 electron volts, because th that was the unit that I, that, that I was using. Everything else is unitless. So my energy is now 7.56 electron volts for my transition which covers this part for my photon. So now we're left with what the energy of this is. So what, what is the energy of a scattered electron? Well, if I equate the initial to the final, I know that the final is a composition of the transition and my, my scattered state. So I know that E initial, which is 8.88 .88 electron volts, this equals to the energy for the emission spectrum, which is 7.56 electron volts. So I'll, I'll put the units in square brackets so that you don't get confused. And then plus the energy of the scattered electron. So if I subtract the two, I get the energy of my scattered electron. And that pretty much gives me a value of, you know, after I subtract them, that E of scattered electron is equal to, you know, the distance between these two is actually 1.32 electron volts. But don't stop here because the problem didn't ask you to figure out the energy of the scattered electron. It actually told us to figure out what the de Broglie wavelength is of the scattered electron. Now, the fact that the electron is scattered, to me, that means that you know, the only energy that this particle has is kinetic energy. So it's a classical sort, uh, sort of en uh, form of energy. So I can go ahead and I can equate this to just one half mass of the electron times my velocity squared, whatever velocity it has. Now, I don't, I don't need to figure out what the velocity is. This is just important to figure out what the de Broglie wavelength is. So this is good. Now, if we look at what our de Broglie wavelength is, we know that you know, lambda 
is equal to Planck's constant divided by p. And Planck's constant has a value of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 34 with units of joules seconds. So this is important too. Always, always keep track of your units because dimensional analysis will help you a lot when solving these problems. A lot of the times you're given uh, energy values in electron volt, but your solution will, will have a constant that doesn't have an electron volt that will have a joule, so you're forced to make that conversion or else your problem is going to be wrong. Okay, so with that in mind, we know what H is, but what about P? Well, P is momentum, and classical momentum is just your mass times your velocity. So this is just mass times velocity, but this is the mass times the velocity, or the velocity, we know what the mass of the electron is, that's given on our table of constants, but the velocity, we don't know what it is, but we can grab it from our classical energy. So if I look at my energy from a side, so I'm going to look at my energy. I know that my energy, I'm going to call this scat for scattered. The energy of my scattered electron, it's simply one half the mass of the electron times the velocity squared. Now, if I multiply both sides by 2m, I'm going to go ahead and get a, uh, lead to the, or get to the point where I can get an equation that is just my mass times v. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2m. So I get 2 mass of the electron e scat of the electron equals, you know, if I multiply this by 2m, the two cancels, I get an m squared. m squared times v squared is essentially just m times v squared. And this becomes just mass of the electron v squared. Now, if I take the square root of both sides, I end up getting a nice relation for just m times v. So I know that m times v now is just simply equal to this cancel. The square root cancels the square. The square root of 2 mass of the electron times the energy of the scattered electron. So if I go back to my de Broglie wavelength, I have mv. So I can take that value as a function of energy and just substitute it into my equation. And that will help us get the answer because we know what the energy of the scattered electron is. We calculate that on the, uh, on the first part. So with that in mind, I'll come over here. Again, this is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 34. And the units are joules seconds. And down here, I have the square root of 2 times my mass of the electron, which is on your table of constants. And it's, it's just 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And this has units of kilograms. And the energy of my scattered electron, which is 1.3 times 1.32. And this has units of electron volts. Now, this has units of electron volts. This has units of joules. This problem's a little bit, you know, it's not, you're not going to get a good answer with that unless you make that conversion. Now, I pointed it out, the second bullet point from the beginning was that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So if I simply multiply this by that conversion, just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, this has units now of joules per electron volt. So. Sorry, I don't get that confused. So this has units of joules per electron volt. The equation turned out to be pretty long. But this cancels the electron volt, and now I have units of joules, which if you go through the math, you're going to go ahead and get, at the end get a unit of just meters because joule is just kilogram meter squares per second squared. So all that factors out, and you end up getting that. If you go through the math and you get uh, your math right, then this should yield a value of 1.06 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So 
this is the value that will get you the right answer on the exam. And again, this is lambda for your de Broglie wavelength, because that's what the problem is. So the problem asked for the de Broglie wavelength, but it gave you all this information to get to the point where you needed to solve. And by conserving energy and knowing the right uh, conversion factors between energies, you're able to get an answer, which is good. Um, it's really easy to comp uh, complicate things and, and uh, get, a wrong, get a wrong problem. Now, I remember from, from grading the exams, the most common error that, that people faced was actually letting the energy of the electron be the energy of a photon. Now, that can't be because the energy of a photon is just your Planck's constant times the frequency. And that's the energy for massless particles. Your electron has mass, so if it's moving, it's not going to be h nu, the energy. It's going to be kinetic energy, one half mv squared, if it's not in an electric field, that is. So with that in mind, just keep in, you know, be, be uh, confident when you solve these problems and make sure that you know, you know exactly what energy uh, equations to use uh, to get the right answer.